trapping has an interesting presence in the world of traditional martial arts. Many martial arts have chosen to remove the majority of all trapping concepts from their syllabus, whereas others have developed a peculiar obsession. Many systems, such as karate, taekwondo, and various strike-based Chinese martial arts have oddly readapted their styles to fit in with a certain aesthetic. This has led to the emergence of a chambering punch, or hikate in karate. Very strange and unrealistic applications have been used to explain certain techniques to fit the block and strike concept of fighting. Both the original source material and the reality of fight dynamics contradict the mainstream interpretation of many traditional techniques. Leading the progressive traditional charge is the karate teacher Ian Abernethy. He regularly makes sense of the various alien looking kata techniques, not only with practical and live application, but also with primary source evidence. The myth needs to be exploded once and for all. Many traditional martial arts, which were taught for civilian self defence purposes, contain techniques for striking whilst referencing, controlling, trapping, and or grappling with an enemy. At the other end of the scale, there are traditional martial arts styles that turn trapping into its own isolated art. The Southern Chinese martial art of Wing Chun and the Filipino martial art of Screamer are two of the most obvious examples. Wing Chun's Qi Sao, or Sticky Hands, allows practitioners to develop tactile awareness at close range. The exercise, although not compliant, is not really a form of sparring. It emphasizes a reduction on tension so that an individual might simultaneously control an opponent's limbs and attack at the same time. There is much in it that one might find is comparable to grip fighting and wrestling. Problems arise when this training method becomes a comfortable exercise with users spending a disproportionate amount of time training one small area of a specific art. The exercise often lacks intensity or any form of pressure, which is a distinctive feature of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Wing Chun teachers such as Alan Gibson and Dave Fenton have worked hard to address this problem by ensuring that the context of Qi Sao is retained, whilst also emphasising the regular need for full contact fighting. Extremist Hubert emphasises the importance of flow. As teacher Ron Vaughan explains, the flow allows students to work with the chaotic energy of a fight. They begin slow but build up momentum, learning to anticipate and change levels and directions in a natural way. To quote Ron, trapping is a concerted plan of action to anticipate, engage with and clear obstructions for defensive as well as counter-offensive purposes, realising the somewhat limited sources of power delivery, angles of attack and body mechanics are available to an attacker. Where all of this fails is when the drill takes over, becoming too comfortable working in Hubud leads to obsessions over attacking limbs when the head is readily available. As with Wing Chun, the switched on extreme door understands the place for drilling and when to start putting it under pressure, remembering its purpose. Once a fight has started, human combatants will more likely than not find themselves clashing forearms. Arms flail and the fighters struggle to prevent the other side from striking. The human impulse is to grapple their own kind, but this is often balanced with the knowledge that percussive blows often deliver the swiftest results. The best fighters and teachers of combat arts have understood the importance of training within this range. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Please leave feedback to let me know your thoughts on tactile awareness, trapping and other related themes covered in this video. For more insights, reviews and diary entries as well as details on my products and services, please check out clubchimera.com. Thank you.